Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah continuing on in our study of Asul al-Sitta the six fundamentals we reached the explanation where Shaykh Zayd al-Madkhali rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatun wasi'ah was talking about the false scholars and false scholarship and how the people began to believe that the people of Ahla Bid'ah and the people of Khurafat, you know, of all kind of wicked, sinful deviations that are based on beliefs of Kufr, that they were actually the callers to Islam. And Ahla Tawheed wa Ahla Sunnah, Ahla Iman were actually those who had deviated. And this is how the affair has become, and we see this in contemporary times, because history is connected. You know, we are on one continuum, so to speak. So, those things that happened in the past, the history, it is tied to what we are doing today. It's not like all of a sudden, you know, we've been created on a new earth or something, uh, something is new has happened, but all of these events are connected. And the effects of what happened in the past of the deviance and the bid'ah and those things which went against the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and false concepts and beliefs and ideology that were established in the past they affect the groups of innovation and the Muslims in general and all of humanity in fact in contemporary times. So the Sheikh he was explaining uh, the fourth principle and he said likewise there have come innovation and acts of worship there are innovations in that which is connected to the prayer its remembrances and its position so meaning that some people deviated in how and in, in prayer in the dhikr and the adhkar of prayer as we see there are innovations in the social behavior from declaring the unlawful as lawful and the lawful as unlawful and innovations have occurred with regards to whatever is connected to the da'wah to Allah, the mighty and majestic, such as the one who claims that he is from amongst the callers to Allah, yet he traverses the path of the khawarij in his da'wah. Uh, Ahabat this is very important, and we've said this countless times, as the scholars mentioned this very important principle, and we've spoken, of, spoken about it, which is, Al-Ibra uh, bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat. This is one of the... Uh, of the the qaida of, of the principle and it is that the reality of something is in its substance not in its name how is that relevant to aqidah and how is that relevant to what we're talking about it's relevant ahabatifillah because it's not simply it's not enough to say you're from ahl sunnah and it's not enough even to say you're salafi but you have to practice you have to practice, and this is where all of us fall short. But some of us are further have further deviated from that path than others. So it's very important that we don't get caught up in names, so to speak, and so much that that's not that's not the 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 maqsud. That's not what's intended. It's not in the intention of calling your ahl sunnah, of calling yourself ahl sunnah, just to call yourself ahl sunnah. But rather, the intention is to practice the principles of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the Aqidah, the, the methodology of Da'wah, the uh, Suluk, the, the, the manners and the mannerisms and the characteristics in general that are known of the characteristics of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and the Salaf al Salih. And so, the Shaykh here mention that all of these innovations have occurred uh, with regards to whatever is connected to the Dawah to the Dawah to Allah the Mighty and Majestic such as the one who claims he is from amongst the callers to Allah yet he traverses the path of the Khawarijan's Dawah and so how many du'at in the West especially even up until this time and this will probably happen this will be until the Yom al Qiyamah <coughs> but We've experienced uh, so many du'at who claim that they were from Ahl Sunnah, who claim that they are really following the Salaf, 
but they were the worst of the Tekfiris. They, it was said about, and I, I've heard this with my own ears, uh, from one of the lectures of uh, Faisal Jamaiki. They used to call him Sheikh Faisal in the UK, in London. And he was so extreme in Tekfir. And of course, he's considered himself from Ahl Sunnah. That's what he called them. They called themselves Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. You know, and they spent countless efforts trying to refute the Salafis, but Ahl Sunnah was Aqwa. Ahl Sunnah was, was stronger in Hujja and Burhan. And Walhamdulillah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got rid of this, this Da'i to where now he has effect still wherever he's at now. He was in Kenya, he was in other places. The point is, is that this individual claimed to be from Ahl Sunnah. Look at uh, Abu Hamza, Misri, also in the UK, in, in the masjid, in uh, wherever he used to call in those, uh, a famous masjid there, I think in downtown London. And, and, you, and, and anyhow, also, the claim was that they're from Ahl Sunnah. Abu Qatar the Philistini. Also, the claim is what? That he's from Ahl Sunnah. Uh, Abu Muhammad uh, uh, Maqdisi in the Jordanian prison. Up until now, I believe he's still in prison and he claims to be following the Salaf. And in fact, his works, he read a lot of books from Salafi scholars, but yet his deviance and his desires and his lack of talib al ilm of seeking knowledge at the feet of the scholars cause him to be a wicked, deviant uh, head of the uh, Tekfiri movements in contemporary times. But the point is, is what? They all claim to be from Ahl Sunnah. So it's not uh, enough to a, a name. Likewise, there are many people now, it becomes trendy, it, it has become trendy. Uh, in many, around the world, the people who to claim Salafi. There's a lot of people who hate Salafis, of course, and they hate the name and what have you. But there's also no doubt the da'wah has spread. And no doubt with technology, there's many people who claim to follow the Salaf al-Saleh and claim to be Salafi. But again, in the Ibrah bi-Haqaiq, Laysa bi musamiyat the reality is in what they're practicing and in their understanding of Islam, not in their name. So you'll find some of them who are extreme, similar to those Tekfiris, but they are extreme with the Qawaiid of Tabdi'ah of declaring people to be innovators. They, quickly, they will drop their sheikhs in a heartbeat. A sheikh who's been years raising them up, who they've been able to benefit from and gain so much from, and literally one thing that they disagree with, they will go and search the earth for other uh, speech from other scholars to denigrate him and throw him off the sunnah and to just destroy all the khair that he's done. Instead of realizing that yes, the sheikh may have made a mistake, or he may not, because all these, uh, most uh, more often than not, these are issues of ijtihad. More often than not, they're issues of ijtihad, not of issues of usul and, uh, and itiqad, and usul and itiqad. But rather, often you'll find that the people that are going extreme, they will make tibdi or people just because they differ with them, or they don't get down with them, or whatever other reasons, which are based on Hawa, because you don't find this from the major scholars of Ahl Sun in the past and those in the present, especially the major scholars, as we mentioned countless times. So it's not sufficient just to uh, make these claims. Then the Sheikh said, so he directs all of his influence, his ideology and his sentiments in assaulting the rulers and their representatives. So in fact, their hidden agenda or their hidden ideology is that of the Khawarij. Even though they claim to be Salafi or they claim to be from Ahl Sunnah. So he traverses various paths and does what the noble messengers of Allah uh, and does what the noble messengers of Allah nor his magnificent prophets nor their followers from the creation did such as uh, marches, assassinations, secret organizations, protests, whatever resembles that from the newly invented affairs and crooked paths. So here the Sheikh is talking about how many people, or some people, who claim to be Salafi, but in fact their methodology of rectifying the Ummah is based on the minhaj 
of Akhwana Muslimin, and this would be in contemporary times. Akhwana Muslimin, they believe in rectifying the society, taking a political approach, engaging in the society, no matter what kind of society it is, and seeking to use uh, generally non-Islamic methods and methodologies to achieve an Islamic aim. And one of the biggest principles that their movement is built upon is that we will agree to disagree and we will unite upon that which we uh, agree upon. So those things we differ upon, we will uh, you know, pardon one another and will unite upon those things we share. And this sounds very nice because to a greater or lesser extent, you have to, as a Muslim, there has to be ta'awan, of course. This is from the, the essence of the deen, the usul of the deen is ta Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands it. Cooperate, all of you, in piety and righteousness, and do not cooperate in enmity and hatred. Also, under the the under the 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 call for shura that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has commanded us to make shura between ourselves. But the way they understand this principle, the way they deduce those principles, and what it means in practicality for their movement is where they deviate. This is where. Uh, the Akhwan uh, Muslimin, they deviate because they are, it's a distortion of Sharia principles and the in Natija for them is that they will sit, it, there will be Tekfiris, there will be Quburis, there will be those who uh, worship graves, there will be a, a various extreme Sufi sects, there will be all kind of various Jama'at and groups who are cooperating just for the sake of having unity amongst Muslims supposedly and some of them may may or not even be Muslim because of their deviant beliefs uh, 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 that are based on kufr or shirk and they want to unite under that umbrella instead of what Ahl Sunnah has always called to which is uniting which is going to be upon Iman and is going to be upon Aqidah, the correct creed and Tawheed and the methodology of the Salaf. So this is where you have the differences uh, between that ideology and between the, the madhab, the minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That Akhwan al-Muslimin, they will take those principles, but those principles, they mean something else in reality. They are uh, false principles because you cannot unite all the Muslims under a false uh, umbrella or a false call, even if it's just a portion of the religion. Because you can't leave out, there's things you cannot compromise in the deen, like Aqidah and, and Minhaj and methodology. Those things can't be compromised. And so then the Shaykh mentioned, he said, so the followers of these paths, in many of their movements, have left the straight path that Allah, the blessed and exalted, prescribed for his servant and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his ummah with regards to that. Indeed, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, clarified the correct minhaj of da'wah to Allah with the clearest explanation through statement and action. So it has been related from Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he said, we're sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so he drew a line like this in front of him. So he said, this is the path of Allah. And he drew two lines to his right and two lines to his left. And he said, these are the paths of the shaitan. Then he placed his hand upon the line in the middle. Then he recited this ayat, indeed this is my straight path, so follow it. And do not follow the other paths as they will separate you from his path. This is what has, uh, he has instructed you with, so that you may become righteous. So the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a straight path. And it's a path where the natija, the end result, is it will produce righteousness. That if you're following the book of Allah, and if you're following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the madhar of the salaf, haqiqatan, you're really truly trying to actualize it, you're trying your best, your end result is going to be righteousness. It's going to be righteousness. If 
Again, this is also a shard that you're practicing properly. And that goes back to what the Sheikh has been uh, speaking about in this Qa'id and the other Qa'id, and it's Fiqh Fi Deen. As the Prophet ﷺ said, May yura the law be khayran ya fiqh fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them fiqh fi deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man salaka tariqan yal talmasuhu bi ilman sahala Allahu lahu tariqan ila the jannah. That whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to jannah. Because that path of knowledge, if you're doing it sincerely for Allah, the, the knowledge, al ilm nafia, is sharia knowledge. It's knowledge of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are sincere in trying to obtain that knowledge, uh, the knowledge of, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the knowledge of how to worship Him tabarak wa ta'ala and to actualize what He intends for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَلَ لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have not created mankind in, in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So if your intention is actually to, uh, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is your purpose in life. That is the ultimate purpose that you are, you're, you're, you're using your dunya for that aim. Then your natija, of course, you're going to have a good ending. Bi'idnillah. But that requires a khlas wa mutaba. It requires uh, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mutaba and following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah bless us with those, those characteristics. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Then the Sheikh said, so since the affair is like that, then it becomes obligatory up, upon us to strive our utmost in presenting Sharia knowledge and taking it from the mouths of the scholars who are firmly grounded in Sharia knowledge. Those who traverse the menhaj of the Salaf al -Sale. And we must strive our utmost in choosing the books which carry within their pages everything that is advantageous and beneficial. And we must strive our utmost in rejecting the innovations, boycotting their people, and in freeing ourselves from their actions, which the noble Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us against in any aspect from amongst the various ways of knowledge and action. All of it is evil, and its people are callers to evil and deception against Islam and Muslims, meaning that those who call to bid'ah, they're calling to newly invented matters in the religion, meaning to change your ibadah, the ibadah that... Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, legislated, how he practiced Islam, how he articulated Islam, how his companions, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, how they understood Islam. And it's imperative that we understand that. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu bidatin dalala wa kullu dalalatin fin nar. He said, all bidah is, kullu uh, bidatin dalala, it's all misguidance. And every uh, and all misguidance leads to the fire. Because misguidance is the opposite of guidance. Guidance is keeping you on the Suratullah al Mustaqim. But misguidance is that which uh, which takes you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh says. And all goodness is found in the book of our Lord and the authentic sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in the understanding of our salaf as -Saleh. And all evil is found in whatever opposes that. So the people with regards to goodness are divided into those who have little and those who have much. Likewise, with regards to evil, they are divided into those who have little and those who have much. So the fortunate one from amongst the servants of Allah is he who approaches the causes for the mercy of Allah and his pleasure, such that mercy is bestowed upon him. And the one who deviates from the path of guidance is destroyed. And Allah does not cause anyone to be destroyed, destroyed except for the one who is wretchedly destroyed. So this is very important for us, Habitatullah, is realizing Allah is not going to destroy you. You need to have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But realize when you are striving to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, and mutaba, you're trying to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with sincerity. Not that you are beginning to take and blind follow individuals, even students of knowledge, even scholars, and you take everything that they say as, it, as if it's the haq. When some of those things you can verify for yourself, or you know it contradicts the sharia, then that's when you're in a great 
dangerous, uh, a, a dangerous path because the, the madhab of taqlid, of blind following and everything is very dangerous. And this is how we build up individuals. And if we look at many, a lot of the fitna that we face today, fitna uh, between the Muslims as far as uh, between uh, Ahlul Sunnah and various other groups, or between Ahlul Sunnah, you'll find often the, the, the issue, some of those issues are the same. It comes down to a type of hezbiya and blind following. For example, individuals will argue and fight about two mashayikh or three mashayikh that are all based on the same minhaj. They're on the same minhaj. They have the same aqidah, the same methodology and da'wah. Perhaps there's a mistake done over here, there's a mistake done over there, or whatever the case, or those mashayikh fall out for whatever reason. Sometimes it's a, don't think it's not an issue of the dunya. Some of the shayikh, mashayikh we've sat with him personally in Medina, when I lived in Medina and other places in Yemen, and we, when, when we, when, uh, confusion was between Ahl Sunnah, between scholars that were known for the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the Mashaykh would say, this is in reality, it's because of its desires. You know, it's something almost personal. So it's not something you should get caught up in and you, you have to take a side. And when people take a side, and they take a side based not upon the real, based on solid evidence and the truth and wanting the truth, then this is where we have so much fitna. And this is where we have people attacking one another and cutting one another, another off. One day, this is a, a group from Ahl Sunnah. The next day, they've split and they've divided. And whole masajid, whole communities, whole countries have departed and, and split and divided just because of the issues between two scholars, two scholars known from Ahl Sunnah. And so it's very important not to get to blind follow and take on those characteristics of Hezbiya because that the end result of that is destruction. It destroys the brotherhood. It destroys the the talent to Alan al with Taqwa. It destroys the Amr bin Maruf and Nahil al-Munkar. It destroys the essence of the deen because Muslims are uh, the Prophet وسلم, said a Muslim Akha Muslim, you should do Baba. That Muslims are the brothers of Muslims and they strengthen one another. So many uh, ahadith uh, so many ayat and ahadith showing inna mu'minun ikhwa. Verily, the believers are brothers. So this is the tragedy of when it happens between Ahl Sunnah. Wallahu musta'an. So the Shaykh says, so the fortunate one from amongst the servants of Allah is he who approaches the causes for mercy of Allah and his pleasure, such that mercy is bestowed upon him. And the one who deviates from the path of guidance is destroyed. And Allah does not cause anyone to be destroyed except for the one who is wretchedly destroyed. Then he says, Indeed, racing towards good deeds is an affair that has been encouraged and obligated by the Qur'an. Uh, as Allah the Almighty and Majestic said, And hasten to forgiveness for your Lord, and, as, and a garden as wide as the heavens and the earth prepared for the righteous. And he further supported this meaning with his statement, Race towards forgiveness from your Lord, and a garden whose width is the width of the heavens and the earth prepared for those who believe in Allah and his messengers. That is the bounty of Allah, which he gives to whom he wills, and Allah is a possessor of great bounty. And similar to, the, to these two ayat is the truthful statement of Allah, the blessed and exalted. So let the competitors compete. Uh, in Surah uh, Mutafifin, verse uh, 26. And may peace and salutations of Allah be upon our Prophet Muhammad, his family, and his companions. Uh, so thus ends the fourth qaida, the, the uh, asul, the fourth uh, asul from the uh, the fourth asul from the uh, asul asitta. And in the next lesson, we will go right into the fifth principle. Uh, we will not review the last uh, portion. There's a, just a small portion that was a review of those two. Uh, Kawa'id, or those two principles, uh, Asul, the third principle, and the fourth principle. But instead, we're going to go right into the fifth principle in the next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with al nafiya ruskin taybu, amal mutakabilin. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.